<laughs> okay, showtime. My name is Frank Levy. Uh, this would be my 10th year with Red Cross, starting with Hurricane Katrina. Uh, there's no greater honor for me. In, I, I perform all over the world. I've had uh, seven tours of Canada, eight tours of Australia. I do programs in interactive theater. And I'm the director of children's theater at Playmakers here at, in Covington. I have been that for the last 22 years. The shows that I do translate into what happens at shelters. I get sent in, I have training from Harvard Medical School in working with large groups who have post-traumatic stress. So my shows, because they're interactive, uh, help promote healing in people with PTSD. And it is my great honor that if you count tonight, and I like doing shows here more than doing them at shelters, I just want to say, I hope we have lots of parties with shows and no more disasters. Love to meet you all at like Walmart or Target. <laughs> You know, every time we finish a deployment, people say, well, how are we going to stay in touch? And I'll say, hopefully, you know, we don't plan it, so let's have more disasters soon. <laughs> but uh, there's no group that I would honor more. I tell people, when they say, well, what's it like working with Red Cross? I say, <laughs> I say they're all saints. <laughs> I say, when there's a disaster, everybody gets in contraflow, it goes, and we strap it on and go do what needs to be done for people who are horribly damaged and need us. And, uh, and it's my great honor to be working with you because I, I tell people that uh, hospice and Red Cross are the highest values you can do in this world. And it is my great honor to be working with y'all. I have uh, several shows that are Christmas themed, but I never do Christmas themed shows at shelters, never. Among other things, disasters always happen in like July and August. Very rarely does a hurricane come on December 25th. So maybe you could look one up, I don't know. Uh, so one of the issues that shelters have when I show up is the shelter manager says, what do you do? So in previous years, it's been part of a plan that I would do shows at various social gatherings that we have, like this one, so that if you're at a shelter in the future, may it never happen, but if you're at a shelter in the future and I'm sent there to do a program, you'd say, oh, that's the guy who does the thing that we saw at the Christmas party. So what I'm going to do is one of the shows that we do at the shelters, because I have three shows that are specifically crafted to promote healing in people with PTSD. And those of you who go to shelters know uh, that everybody at the shelter has PTSD. And as uh, Red Cross people who've been there a few days start having it too. I mean, it, it's... Uh, there's no more difficult but more rewarding thing that we can do than volunteer for Red Cross. Last thought before I just jump into the show. Just because you're a hero, and I, I believe you all to be, and you volunteer and go put yourself in harm's way to work for Red Cross, does not mean that you're a hero about volunteering to be in Frank's show. So I've had a lot of times when I do these programs and you go, oh, I'll go out in the hurricane, but I ain't going to go to no show. That's kind of an interesting the value structure, but I would appreciate it if you would, because the shows are interactive, and it'll be just like they are at the shelters. The shows are not designed for children, they're not designed for adults, they're designed for the people in the room, whoever they are. So we st the lowest age I usually work with is four, and uh, goes to 104, so if any of you are over 104, you probably probably shouldn't do this. Also, as a, a little extra, extra reward, we'll be shooting video of the show, so any of you who are in the show, if you want a little... Uh, we can get you a copy of the video. We'll probably put it somewhere that you can get a copy of the video. You'll be able to see yourself in the show and uh, your great moment on stage. All right. Now, I'm thinking the best thing to do is start. Just because we work together in Red Cross doesn't mean we all have the same things in common away from Red Cross. So let's see if we have a, I'm assuming it'll translate across. So I'm going to tell you some things I hear a lot. And if any of you have ever heard or said any of these same things, maybe we have enough in common that you could do my show. Okay, uh, let's see. First thing. Anybody ever heard or said this? Don't make me stop this car. Anybody? One person? No? Come on, I heard it. I'm an old guy and I used to get that. And I would tell my dad, please do stop the car. I don't want you reaching around behind the seat and the car going all over the place while you're trying to grab me and I'm hiding behind the seat. Okay, how about this one? Because I said so, that's why. You're talking about just yesterday. 
Okay, right, let's try it. Maybe we do have something to come. Let's try another one. How about, uh, no, you wouldn't say that because you were the Red Cross. I bet not a one of you, I'm gonna, this is my wife, Bonnie, over here. Just to say, Bonnie, I'm going to give him this one, but I know none of them because these are golden-hearted people. So I'm going to bet you not a one of them has ever said this before. Okay? All right. All right, I'm going to ask you this one. No, I'm not expecting any response because you would never talk to a child this way. But I have heard that people do. So is it any, has even one of you ever said this? I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, no! Oh, I'm ashamed. <laughs> okay, last one. Last one. This is my favorite one. Anybody ever said this? Don't give me that look. I don't know what the look is, but it, clearly it, it lets you know something. All right, seems like we have enough in common that maybe we could work together. Now I need some actors and I need some sound effects. And if you're going to do sound effects, you do it right from your seat. So a really smart person would volunteer right away to do a sound effect so they wouldn't get stuck being an actor. Now I need somebody to be the sound of the rain. I just need somebody to make a rain sound for me. Could you do it right from your seat? You would do it right there. Be the rain. I really don't know how rain sounds. Well, okay, excuse me just a second. Here's what we're going to do. Anytime in the show I say, the rain was falling, I won't say it's stupid like that, but I'm going to say, the rain was falling, I will hold the microphone out to you like this, and you just start spitting as much as you can. <laughs> what is your issue? What? Okay, I'm a trained professional. Okay, all right. All right, I'm going to step out of the show for a second. Let's talk about science. It is a known... Uh, scientific fact of science that rain and spit are almost exactly the same thing. So now if you were walking if you were walking with your best friend and you just walk along y'all talking and you weren't looking and your best friend just started quietly spitting on you, you know how they do. You just go like and if you weren't seeing them do it, you would say, oh, it's raining. Alright, fine. We'll do it a different way. Everybody has limitations. Okay, we'll do it a different way. You don't have to spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attitude. Okay, plan B. This is a plastic bag. Uh -huh. In the show, whenever I say, the rain was falling. I'll hold the microphone up to you like this. And then you just rub this on the microphone. Try to have some air in the top like this will blow. Okay, how much? I forgot what I was going to say. The rain was falling. The rain falling. The rain was falling. Now, the spit would have been better, and he's, he wanted to do the spit, but you were all attitude, you're not going to do the spit. Okay, the rain. Okay. okay, let's try it, see if you can do it. Outside, the rain was falling. You are the man, well, you're a man, okay, you're not the man. Okay, all right, I need somebody to be the sound of thunder. Another thing you do right from your seat. Can somebody volunteer for me to be the sound of thunder? No spitting. Okay, sound of thunder. Young lady, would you be the sound of thunder? I'm you to do it right from your seat. This is a bag full of pots and pans. Whenever I say thunder, you drop this. Try not to crush any of our volunteers when they need them. They're a disaster. Just drop that. Okay. All right, that's the sound of thunder. Now, I need somebody to be the sound of horses galloping. I need a horse's galloping sound. It's going to work just like, can I get two here? Thank you. Ready? I knew the previous one would end up volunteering. Okay, start one ahead of the other one. Okay. All right. Let me hear my horses. No more wine. Okay, let me hear my thunder. Okay, thunder with attitude. That's all right. Okay, now this show has some drama in it, and I need somebody to be the sound of a dramatic moment. I got an idea. See a little girl can do it. She made me be the judge of a good person. Okay. You hold this by the string. Whenever I say this is a dramatic moment, round part on the edge. By the way, they say you can also cook with this. I had no idea. 
You need another piece, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dramatic moment. Okay. All right. Now I need somebody to be the sound of a train whistle. Because we're going to have a train in the show way off in the distance. You blow the whistle two times, like this. Every time, well now I blew on it, just a second, you need a clean one. Just a second. What now? Okay, just one more time. Fine, fine. All right, great. Wait, I got this other one. Okay, this one looks like a train. You blow it two times when I say train. Well, I can do that too. <laughs> okay, now I need, I need somebody to be the sound of a bird singing. It's a little bird whistle. You blow the whistle, and there's a little stem in the back. I need somebody from their seat to be the sound of a bird singing. Oh, I see that pretty smile. <laughs> the sound of a bird singing. Make sure it works okay, please. Okay. Okay, excuse me just a second. Sorry. Stop being better than me. <laughs> this is my living woman. Okay. Now, I need a beautiful flower. Oh, so many to choose from. I'll be the flower. Come on up here, my beautiful flower. Oh, I thought I'd do it in my Now, you, know, you, can, you can bail on it. It's usually a girl anyway, but I don't mind. You can bring your notes. You would be a unique, flower. beautiful flower. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My lovely assistant, Anna. Okay, now I'll tell you every time whatever the flower says. Like the beautiful flower goes. Wah, wah. Hang on a second. Very nice. You have potential. Okay. Don't quit your day job. Okay. I just want your opinion. Does it help you when you go to shelters if you're in the Red Cross uniform, you're wearing your vest, and would, it would be awkward to go there dressed like you were going to dig in a yard or something. You probably could still do the work just as well, but everybody recognizes everybody. And you know, folks, it's the same with beautiful flowers. They should look like beautiful flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Sunflower. <laughs> I also need the sound of sword fighting. Okay. Young ladies, if I can interrupt you for a second. I'll give you two of these, and every time I say sword fighting, you do this. Okay? Don't cook. <laughs> do I want to cook with my stuff. Okay. okay. Right. I need a brave knight. Somebody gonna be a brave. Oh, I want you for something else. Come sit over here. Come sit over here. Thank you. Right over there. Yellers, you're a knight right there. I, I have, who, do you, who do you recommend? That man right there, Raw. Uh, yeah, there he is. No, I got something else for him. Oh, <laughs> oh, this guy, yeah, yeah. Come on, my friend. Let me get to sit down. Okay. Your brain plan's gonna have to leave, so we're gonna another brain plan. No, that's okay. That's okay. I do. Help me find another brain plan. Come on, my brain plan. I don't know if you're going to be a brave knight. But in later years, remember, you missed your opportunity to be a brave knight. I know, I know. I'm just saying. Okay. And the knight uniform is official looking. You could probably show up at a shelter, you know, with a sword. And... No, probably not. Okay. Okay, my brave knight. At least I'm a flower. <laughs> Beautiful flower. Yeah, you're brave. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay? This isn't just any helmet, it has spikes and a skull. As long as it has a skull, that's all I care about. Your sword? 
and through worm fruit. You will be the beautiful dragon. Yeah, okay. Do you know my beautiful dragon? No. Okay, so, uh, uh -huh. here. Uh, when I'm there, I got my hands. Okay, and you need a small, subtle uh, dragon headpiece. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. I need identical twin beautiful princesses. That one right there. Yeah, yeah. Come on, princess. Come on, princess. And you, princess. Come on, princess. Be a princess for me. It's not your day. Okay. 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 Alright, she's well, Yeah. We <laughs> call that Molotov. Molotov. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Okay. Hi, Very nice. Once upon a time, out in the country, where the rain was falling, more rain than that, thunder was rumbling in the distance, and with attitude. And then thunder stopped. Okay. She's my boss, I have to watch what I say. <laughs> Frank, we're sending you to the North Pole for this deployment. Birds were singing up in the trees. This is so beautiful. As a lonely train whistle could be heard far across the valley. <laughs> or right next door. The soldiers were in the courtyard practicing their sword fighting. They were a little more violent than that. They, you know, <laughs> as horses were galloping back and forth along the road. At this dramatic moment, more dramatic than that, the knight was in the castle library because he knew if he wanted to get ahead as a knight and wanted to be royalty one day, there were two things he needed to do. One was read and learn what he needed to do in the future, and the other was do his own homework, not copy. I know, he gave me that guilty look, but ooh, he knows. And so you could hear the knight in the castle late of an evening going, read, 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 read. And the beautiful flower, you are so beautiful. The beautiful flower would look in the window and say, You go, mighty knight. Amen. <laughs> the flower would look in the window before he loses all his lines, and he would say, You go, mighty knight. But I don't want you to think that everybody was like the knight, going, Read, read, read. Read, read, read. There were these two identical twin beautiful princesses who had attitude. And the people would ask them, they would say, Princesses! Are you going to do your homework? Princesses. And the princesses would giggle. See they had attitude. You can see they're identical. And they would say, no. No. And that, so then the people would say, well, princesses, are you going to read? Well, princesses, are you going to read? And they would say, read my lips, no. Read my lips, no. And thunder would crash in the distance. And so the people would say, well, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? And they would giggle. And they would say, we're going to go horseback ride. We're going to go horseback ride. And the little flower would try to warn him and say, it's dangerous up in the woods. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> so the princesses would go out and ride their horses. That sounded like horses. And the flower, although... He didn't say anything to warn him. He passed him a note that warned them. Thanks a lot. But passed him a note. Passed him a note that warned them that they needed to be careful in the woods. But they weren't careful because they were princesses, and so they just giggled. <laughs> Meanwhile, the knight was back at the castle, going read, 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 and the flower was going la 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 la. <laughs> okay, that's him with the flower. Welcome to the show. Meanwhile, as rain was falling over the valley, more rain than that. More rain than that. More. Whoops. <laughs> um, it was him. No, you can see. I come here. I don't know you people. I don't know this guy. I'm trying to do a little rain sound. Him. I hold the thing up. He goes crazy. I got it. 
Chill out, I got it. Calm down. Okay, he's good. Thunder rumbled in the distance. Thunder. Sometimes when it's late, you can count the seconds, tell how far away the storm was. That one was in Utah. Okay. Meanwhile, at this dramatic moment, the princesses were out riding their horses. The little flower went, uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Or once. <laughs> As birds were singing up in the trees, and the princesses thought if they could hear the birds, that must be okay. Besides, it's not like they were alone. They, could, they were right by the tracks. They could hear a train whistle right, going right by. Okay, well, that's when the princesses, that's when the princesses encountered the drag. Oh, man, I messed up. I messed up the whole show. Hang on, just, just a second. You have to be born. How is a dragon born? I'm not sure. Egg. Hey, could you just like bend over like that? Just, just, no, no, you stay with you. Hey, just bend over. No, you don't have to climb up. Okay, just, okay. Just, just better than I expected. Okay. Uh, excuse me, you don't look like an egg at all. But wait, I got have a white cloth. I'm gonna drop a white cloth on you. Okay, okay. Here we go. It's a white cloth. Don't be scared. Okay. Now I am a I'm a child care expert, so hang on. I'm gonna check on her just a second. Are you good? You're not scared, huh? It's just a, a sheet, you know, it's like, it's like camping out in the yard. We're good, okay. She's good! Okay, so the princesses were giggling. They were giggling. And riding their horses through the woods. Meanwhile, the knight was back at the castle, going, read, read, homework, homework. Read, read, homework, homework. And the rain was falling over the valley. The soldiers were practicing sword fighting back at the court. You could hear the birds singing as the train whistle could be heard far off in the distance. At this dramatic moment, there was a crash of thunder in the distance. You got it. <laughs> Hawaii, it's in Hawaii. And the two princesses saw the giant egg, and this princess pointed. And she wasn't very well educated because she didn't do her homework and she didn't read. So she said some word like "look up, look up, look." Yeah. Over yonder. See what I mean? Okay. And so both of the princesses walked over by the giant egg, and this princess just touched the egg very gently on the top. And the egg moved. Move egg. And so they started petting the egg. One princess on either side. They started petting and petting that egg. And pretty soon, the egg moved more and more, and it cracked open. And the most beautiful baby dragon came out and stood there. And the first thing she saw when she was born was those two princesses. So she stood up. So she stood up all the way up like standing. She faced the audience. And she held out her arms for a big hug. And the two princesses hugged the dragon. And the dragon ate the princesses. Okay. You're dead. Come on over here. Come on over here. You're dead. That, that was really dumb. Okay. See where I'm pointing? My like here, right here. Okay. If they had paid attention in school, like the knight, they would know you don't pet a giant egg and you don't hog a dragon. Now the dragon, after eating the two princesses, did the same thing you would do. Uh, she burped. <coughs> But the dragon, even though she was just born and she was a cute little baby dragon, she didn't know where her next meal was coming from. She couldn't count on her, she couldn't count on princesses delivering themselves for breakfast every day. And these two princesses went to heaven by the cookies. And now, now they're in heaven school and they're sweet mates in heaven school. And finally, a little late in life, if you know what I mean, they're in there going, read, read, homework, homework. So they're doing that. The knight's going, read, 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 read. And the dragon decides she's going to go in the cave library and find out what dragons are supposed to do. So she sits down in the cave library, and she's going, read, 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 read. And the little flower's going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Is that awesome or what? Meanwhile, time passes. Rain's falling outside. Thunder is rumbling in the distance. The knight has been practicing his sword fighting every day. He's been riding his horse every day to make sure he's ready for battle. But he's been studying. And at this dramatic moment, I 
knew it. <laughs> While the princesses are up in heaven going, read, read, read. Read, read, read. By total coincidence, the knight and the dragon both discovered the exact same piece of information at the same moment from two different books. The dragon went, aha! Aha! And the knight went, oh ho! Oh ho! And here's what they found. <laughs> In the dragon's book, I know you won't believe this, but in the dragon's book it said, a dragon's job is to find a knight and burn him up with fire and smoke. Uh -oh. That's right. And the knight's book said, he's supposed to find a dragon and stab that dragon with his sword. Well, the dragon, the dragon didn't know how to find a knight. She's just a little baby. The cute little baby. The cute little baby. But the knight knew how to find a dragon. At this dramatic moment, Thunder crashed in the distance, and the knight stood up. The knight stood up. He held out his arm, and he said, I call for the royal messenger. I call for the royal messenger. <laughs> That's good. And the little flower went, uh-oh. Uh-oh. And the royal messenger heard his call. The royal messenger had come to America from the far-off land. Come on, royal messenger. <laughs> and now the Royal Messenger had started out in school because you know there's all kinds of great programs in schools in America but the messenger didn't do her homework and she did not do her reading that's why she works for the messenger service she's got to ride her horse her horse through the rain and deal with all the difficulty oh man I messed up again I am so sorry but no no look if you come from a far off land then you're not going to speak English and we're not going to understand anything the royal messenger came from a far off land where they speak English. No, no, I can't. Oh, here we go. She came from Jamaica. <laughs> came from Jamaica, where they speak English. And she heard the call of the night. She got outside, and she got on her horse, and she began to ride. She rode through the forest, but the rain was falling. Thunder was crashing in the distance. Birds were singing up in the trees, as a lonely train was could be heard far off in the distance. Horses were galloping up and down the road. Back, back at the castle were practicing their sword fighting. At this dramatic moment, the messenger arrived at the night's castle. And she knocked on the door. Knock on the door. And the knight said, Come in. Come in. And the little flower went, Dun, 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 dun. Boom. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so the messenger said, You sent for the messenger, Mom? You sent for the messenger, Mom? <laughs> and the knight said, Find me a dragon. Find me a dragon. Tell that dragon. Tell that dragon. Meet me tomorrow, 12 o'clock, by the flower. <laughs> meet me 12 o'clock. Tomorrow, by the flower. Both of those words. I got this stuff. Yeah. So the messenger got on her horse and she began to ride. She rode through the rain in the forest. Not we had to get serious, so he practiced his sword fighting. He would sword fight fast. He would sword fight slow. Oh, you're pretty good. Sometimes he would stop. And start. Stop. Start. Stop. Okay, so they're better than me. Okay. So, the messenger arrived at the dragon's cave. She marched up to the door. She knocked on the door. The dragon stood up. in a dragon. Dragon said, What do you want? What do you want? Oh, that was good. And the messenger said, Night says, Night says. Meet him tomorrow. Meet him tomorrow. Twelve o'clock by the flower. Twelve o'clock by the flower. And the dragon said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Please. Come closer. Please come closer. So the messenger went close to whisper it in the dragon's ear. And the dragon ate the messenger. Uh, the messenger died and went to heaven. Come meet the princess. No, we got a room for you. Well, she didn't go to school. She should have paid attention. 
So the messenger ends up in heaven, which is full of cookies, and uh, and they're in, they're sweet mates in heaven school, and they're all up there going read, read, homework, homework. A little late, but about time. Okay. But the knight got ready to meet the dragon in battle. The knight stood up. The dragon stood up to get ready to meet the knight in battle. And the knight rode his horse out by the flower. The flower hated it when all the battles were by him, and he went, oh man. Oh, man. But he had to deal with it, you know. And at this dramatic moment, the knight saw the dragon approaching in the distance, and he drew his sword. Sit down right there. And he said, Dragon, I'm going to stick you with my sword. Dragon, I'm going to stick you with my sword. And the, the dragon said, Knight, knight, I'm going to burn you up with fire and smoke. I'm going to burn you up with fire and smoke. Well, the knight didn't wait. Thunder crashed in the distance, and he galloped his horse right at the dragon. Okay. He went complete. Right. Oh, but he missed the dragon, and the dragon ended up here. And the dragon did that evil dragon laugh. <laughs> oh, you're really evil. I had no idea. No, you can't learn that. You, it's natural. Okay. Meanwhile, the little flower went, uh oh. Uh oh. Somehow, even though he'd been practicing sword fighting for months. Somebody wake Mama up. Okay, thank you. He had missed. He had missed the dragon. The dragon said, "Now I'm gonna burn you up with fire and smoke." Now I'm gonna burn you up, fire and smoke. And she blew fire and smoke right at the knight. <laughs> Whoa! Now here's the deal. The dragon had never blown fire and smoke at anybody before. And just like at school, where there's trouble, instead of going for help, you got to go see what the trouble is. Well, the dragon did not. Have, had any practice at aiming the fire and smoke, and she completely missed the night and killed this lady in the audience. <laughs> you have to die, you have to be dead. Okay. You're a nurse, fix yourself. Okay. 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 Now, why did the knight, though, why did the knight miss the dragon? Because the knight knew how to do it. The knight had never really hurt anybody before, and it, suddenly it dawned on him, I don't have any reason to, just because some book says I'm supposed to stick my sword in a dragon, I don't know this person. And so at the last minute, he decided not to hurt her. And the dragon, she did not have that problem, she had already eaten two princesses and a messenger, but she didn't know any better, and she was learning a lesson from the knight. And they both realized that they really had nothing against each other and maybe a great deal in common. So the knight put away his sword and they went to the middle of the battlefield. He rode his horse right up to the middle of the battlefield and they shook hands and they became friends. And they went, they decided to go into business together. And they opened a barbecue grill restaurant where, where the knight's Armor, since he wasn't going to fight anymore, was used to make up the grills, and the dragon did all the cooking. And so, as you can hear the princesses up in heaven going, read, read, homework, homework. Read, read, homework, homework. And thunder is crashing in the distance. A light rain is falling over the valley. More rain than that. The birds are singing in the treetops. You can hear a lonely train whistle far off in the distance as horses are galloping up and down the road. Thunder is crashing again as the soldiers are practicing sword fighting in the courtyard. And at this dramatic moment, the beautiful flowers stood up in the garden. Beautiful stand up, beautiful <laughs> And he faced the audience over there. And he held out his arm to the audience and he said, The end. Ta da! Now I know, now I know you thought I was going to do a, sh a show, but let me tell you what you just saw. You just saw about 15 of you do a full production of a show, full props, full sound effects, full costumes, without ever practicing it before. You should be very proud of yourselves. Could I please hear it for the beautiful flowers? See, beautiful. How about the poor dead princesses and messenger who learn to read and go to school? How about the dragon? How about the brave knight? And how about the real stars of the show, all these amazing sound effects? There, 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 there. Now I'm going to count to three. We're all going to bow. You should clap even more because these people just did something bold and, and with great talent. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. If you use a whistle in my show, please keep the whistle. If you use anything else in my show, put it on this table right here. 
This is a sample of one of 53 different shows I do at Shelters, and I look forward to seeing you somewhere other than that, but now you know what I do, and Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you very much.